Hi guys, this is the Forgetful Scholar, and let's chat about books. So this week is going to be oops, this week's going to be Prison Break and Fake Marriage. I'm getting distracted by my dog. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Okay. <laughs> so the first book we're going to talk about is Her Alien Ex Con Monster. Her Alias Con Monster Bites book number four by Michelle Mills. And this has to do with Aaliyah, the twin sister of Jada. And Jada was one of the main characters in uh, Monsters Love Curvy Girls. I believe she was book five or six. Um, and uh, Krell. Krell. I'll spell on the bottom. <laughs> So this one, I would say is three stars, um, and that's being kind of generous. Part of me wants to do two stars. Um, it started out really exciting. Um, Aaliyah Ale is like running away from the mob, remember, because her and Jada, they're twins, and their father is a big mobster, mob boss in New Earth, and he wants to marry them off. Um, for power and things like that, so they escape. And uh, Aaliyah is supposed to be like the evil twin, the bad twin. Um, she's uh, a model influencer. Well, she's a fashion influencer and a model, and she's plus size and things like that. I liked her personality a lot. I think that's why it's a three stars instead of a two. I like that she was feisty and like she definitely was like, hey, wait a minute, what's going on? Uh, and she took control of things, you know what I mean? Um, she was sneaky. I appreciate that. I like that a lot. You know, especially when uh, she's trying to get away from her father's guys. You know, she has these smoke bombs in her pocket just because. And she's like, yeah, no, you know, I'm out of here. So I, I, li I really liked her. Um, Krell, I was kind of a little disappointed because he, it, cause like in the beginning, very exciting. He breaks out of, well, he doesn't break out of prison. They are transferring him. He's a prisoner and he's falsely accused of this murder and they're transferring him. Um, and they're transferring him on Omega, uh, nine and he escapes at the same time that Ale Aaliyah escapes onto Omega nine. Um, and there's a fire fight and I was like, Ooh, cool. Cause sometimes the author does do fight scenes and stuff like that. So I was excited about that. Um, and he has this, and he like, you know, instant, insta lust, you know, as these, um, books do. And he takes her to his hideout on Omega nine. I didn't really feel like they described Omega 9 very much. Um, pretty much the whole book I was picturing on it as a space station, but I think it actually was a planet, not a space station. Um, and they're hiding out in his uh, safe house, which is like a penthouse, super fancy and stuff like that. And they get, she gets, ca like Alea, she gets cabin fever and it's like, we're going dancing. And I was like, Wait, what? <laughs> you you guys are like, you're wanted by the mob. He's wanted by the authorities. Um, and, and you want to go dancing? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Something about that in my brain was like, yeah, no. I mean, to be fair, he did like disable the um, video feed and stuff like that. And when they're in the dance club, the mob prince of the, uh, um, Hercon, Hercon, Her the red aliens with the black horns, that's who, uh, Krell is, and, um, the mob prince of that species sniffs her like he sniffed her twin sisters, like, oh, she's not the one. So I'm guessing he's, has a book, um, or else that's just weird. He's just randomly sniffing girls. Like, that's super weird. Like, stop. Bad touch, stop. Knock it off. And so they go dancing and stuff like that. And um, I don't know. It was just not her, not the author's usual world building, not the author's usual character development. Um, Krell, there's really no reason why he's like a professional thief and stuff. He was just bored and thought it would be fun. And he's cousin to the uh, red, he uh, red um, black horned alien that Aaliyah's twin sister Jada married. Um, 
So at the end of the book, both girls still have the same last name as their twin sister. And I was like, okay, that's a little cheesy, but all right, okay. A little bit of cute, a little bit of cheesy. I'm not sure if I like that or hate that. I don't know. So um, moving on to the next point. Usually they build this universe up. And all I really got from this book is that the authorities or peacekeepers um, are bribable. And I was like, yeah. I was like, huh, because usually, you know, there's so much more that this author elaborates on, even with these novellas and things like that. And yes, again, this week, two novellas. I've been really busy lately. What can I say? Um, so yeah, three stars. Um, eh, eh, not my favorite of this uh, series. And I had really high hopes because it started off with like running away from the mob, running away from the police firefight whoa and then the rest of it was just like wah wah like the rest of it was just sort of like slice of life but they're stuck in this penthouse kind of a thing um you know what i mean so i love that the author put in more action because usually they don't everything's usually off the page so i love that um i but it kind of stinks that everything else kind of like the action kind of fizzled out and then um again um Krillin, I keep pronouncing it different every time I say it. <laughs> um, he didn't do it. He didn't kill this guy, right? Um, and his cousin, um, Eden, basically proves it, but proves it off the page, even in Eden and Jada's book, um, which which sinks. And I'm like, oh man, it could have been like one more chapter where we see like maybe he's caught by the peacekeepers and then his cousin proves that he's innocent. That could have been fun. So that was a bummer. Um, yeah, so this one was a three star. Um, definitely not my favorite. Much better than uh, the one where um, I still remember it. Like the the one with Monsters Love Curvy Girls was it the third book where the guy was like living in the same house as a girl for six months and months and she had no idea. That one was still, still is nuts to me. Okay, moving on. <laughs> I gotta move on or I'm gonna spiral into a conversation about like all that nope nope you guys already heard my rant about that that is not a book I'm discussing this week even though I I brought it up so my bad okay all right so the second book is The Fake Marriage and this is the Castleton um Castle Rem book two by Megan Dare and again I told you I really liked I really like this author's world building and the magic system and things like that so I definitely gave this four stars um the book before we were introduced uh to Narek and K um Kalar and Kalar was the mage of the castle and Narek was the head of the guards um and they work for the duke Bedros who is um really uh, a nice lord like he's not you know he seems more friendly like i liked in the first book he teased them they teased him it seemed like a very casual friendly relationship in this book it has to do with him and his arch nemesis not nemesis anymore um warren so okay again this is a novella but it didn't feel like it it didn't feel like it dragged but like the pacing was so fantastic and the story was rich enough that like I felt like I read a full 200 page book you know so it was fantastic um so <laughs> okay so Bedros used to be friends with the prince but he was just the royal prince um you find out that Bedros is from like more of a humble farmer um upbringing and then his father became a baron and Bedros went to fancy school where uh, no one um, was his friend because he was like the outsider. So the prince befriended him and he hated Warren because the prince told him to. And in this book you get, because it's all his POV, and you kind of get like, the only reason he didn't like Warren was because, you know, he was manipulated by the prince now king and like he feels really bad about it and like, wow, Warren's so handsome. Why was I always such an idiot kind of a thing. Warren shows up at the castle right before winter. I remember they're in the mountains. So like, 
it gets cold up there and Warren's property is to the south of the continent so he's used to like the way they described it I pictured like Miami compared to like um Alaska kind of a thing you know what I mean so he shows up to let Bedros know that the king is planning to kill everyone here in the village and blame the con the their neighbors which is a different country right across the border because they're because Bedros um kingdom is on the border and they have a lot of trade with them you know what I mean so the king uh, plans to kill Bedros and everyone in the village and the castle and blame it on the country right next door and he's like Fuck. <laughs> so they prepare and also um Kogar's brother who is also a priest a monk mage is in the castle as well so they prepare it. and someone sabotaged a lot of things and I love in this book how the author showed Bedros's character like at one point um the grates the sewage grates were blocked and in, and it's freezing weather and instead of sending and it's raining and it's horrible and instead of sending someone else he puts on like a cloak and he climbs down the castle to do it himself and Warren's like what are you doing and he's like oh no I just gotta the you know my castle's flooded I gotta gotta clean out this grate like he didn't think anything of it and while he's doing this he gets waylaid by um a stranded cat that he saves and he goes back and like even though the story had no reason to do the cat thing it showed what kind of person he is like he's a, a genuinely good person he cares about his people he's not willing to send them to do something that he's not willing to do himself so he's a really good leader and you could see why everyone in the castle and the village are completely loyal to him because you know th this is very much a serfdom kind of society so to have like a duke who would lay down their life for you is kind of like unheard of so they they really care about him as well so this is pretty they had a lot of fighting pretty action-packed and the um basically the king's right hand man shows up and is like um hey you you could come back to court just play along with what the king's gonna say and Bedros is like go fuck yourself and um the right hand man like sees Warren there and Warren is basically was run out of his country and he goes to Bedros to warn him about the oncoming slaughter so he's like what are you doing here arrest him and he's like you can't arrest my husband because this is the lie Colgar said when the duke was out um checking the perimeter to make sure Warren didn't get thrown in prison so the monk falsifies the marriage certificate so they're fake married and they have to pretend to be fake married you know what I mean and I was like oh hello trope hello romance trope how are you how you doing so um so that happens and I will say I enjoyed the fighting I think the fighting was a little bit more vague than than some other books I've written I mean other books I've read but I didn't it didn't stop my enjoyment of it um there's a ha like the ending is fantastic I like the ending and also like leads into more so I'm looking forward to more of this um yeah yeah I liked it and you know it didn't shy away from like chopping off heads because <laughs> again this is a, a very you know feudal serfdom kind of society with magic so you know there's that and again I like that there didn't seem to be a problem with same-sex marriages it's just that hey Lauren is a traitor and you married him you know what I mean? kind of a thing that's what it was and um and I did enjoy how they showed Bedros like his character through actions I really like that at one point the right hand man of the king um kicked all the servants out because he wanted a private audience with Bedros when they ate and Bedros is like how dare you bring them all in it's cold out there I'm not gonna have them eat in the freezing weather this is not your castle don't you dare do that again and brought all the servants back into the warm um grand hallway so they could eat in, in relative comfort so I did really enjoy that so that was this week <laughs> I have fun I don't want to but it's time for me to get back to the real world like comment subscribe and I'll see you later bye